Hi again, and welcome to part two of our tour through Jupyter Notebooks. In this video, we're going to discuss Markdown and how to include formatted text in a Jupyter Notebook right alongside our executable code, which we learned how to do in the first video. So here is the notebook we had in the first video. Go into any cell and select Markdown from this pull-down menu. You might notice that once we do that, there is no in marker on the left now because this is no longer code, but it's going to be text. I'm just going to type in a single sentence here. Now hit Shift Enter when we're done, just like you would to execute Python code, and the result is text that is formatted for reading on the screen. If all we wanted was to produce plain basic text, then that's it. We just use a markdown cell to do that. However, we can go considerably farther with that. Markdown is a text formatting language, very similar in style to HTML, but simpler since it's only focused on formatting plain text. Markdown is actually the most common text formatting system on the web. For example, documentation in GitHub is written in Markdown, and so are comments on Reddit. We're going to add some formatting to the basic text that we just created. So go to the text we produced and double click on it. And what this will do is convert the text back to its source that so we can edit. We're going to add italics, boldface, and a clickable hyperlink to this basic text here. To add italics, just put asterisks around the text you want to italicize. Note that Jupyter formats the text source so that it looks italicized in the source code. And if you hit Shift Enter to execute this, you see that the readable text on the screen is also italicized. Now let's go back and boldface some of the text. Again, we're going to double click on the text output, which will convert it back to its source that we can edit. To make something boldface, we just put double asterisks around the text. Again, Jupyter will try to apply that formatting to the source, and when you hit Shift Enter, the screen text is bolded too. Finally, let's create a, create a clickable hyperlink. I have a page over here in a separate browser tab that has the official documentation for Markdown, which I hope you'll take time to read and play with. I'm going to copy that URL from this page, then go back over to the Jupyter Notebook and add some text. And I would like to create a link from this piece of text to the Markdown documentation page. To do that, I'm going to put square brackets around the text that I want to appear in the output. And then right next to it, with no space, I'm going to open up a set of parentheses and then insert the URL into that set of parentheses. This doesn't really format to anything in the source code, but when I hit Shift Enter, you'll see that the text now has a hyperlink to it, and I can click on this link to bring up the page that I linked to. So Markdown has a lot of features you might use, all of which are spelled out in the documentation, and there are a million different Markdown tutorials online and in print. Let's just cover two more Markdown features, headings and creating bulleted lists. You can create a multiple level heading in Markdown documents using the hashtag symbol. For example, here's an instance of creating a Markdown cell with three levels of headings. The top level heading I'll indicate with a single hashtag, and you'll notice that the text next to it is very large and bolded. Two hashtags represents a second level heading, and three hashtags represents a third level heading. And you can keep this going and create as many he heading levels as you want. Be sure to put a space in between the hashtags and the text of the heading. And when you hit the Shift Enter to evaluate the code, you see the headings show up properly formatted. Let's double click on that text one more time to go back and edit a little bit more. Let's create a simple bulleted list, and this is very simple. To create a bulleted list, I'm just going to put a dash or a plus sign wherever I want a bullet to go. So here's a very short example. You can also create multiple leveled lists by going below one of the top level bullets and hitting tab and then entering in a second bullet. They won't appear any different in the source, but they will look right when you execute the code. That's it for the second video. In the third and final video, we'll do a very short example of putting this all together to make a document that combines text and code, and we'll see what we can do with it using the menu and toolbar options.